Hi, this is Mary, and this is Dreamy Code Design Studio again, and this video is day number two of dying with Cochino Bug. Yesterday, we ground up the bug and uh, cooked it. We decanted it three times, and we ended up with a really nice liquor. And we let it soak overnight with the bugs, and then today, we are now ready to do the actual dyeing. So I've kind of done a little sleight of hand here. This pot, which is my brew, is not last night's pot, okay? So there's actually a lot more of it here because I'm going to be dying more weight, okay, more fiber. But let's look at this. And by the way, before I go any further, let me apologize to Kathy Vittori of Botanical Colors because in yesterday's video, I kept saying Botanical Gardens this, Botanical Gardens that. That's not her business. I got my bugs from Botanical Colors and so I just want to say my apologies to Kathy and her very amazing business. Okay, now let's get back to our business. Here we have the pot. I have filled it mostly to the top. I will add more, but it is distilled water. A reminder again that distilled is a must. And I have this cool little colander that sits over it so I don't have to use either, you know, I don't have to use hands to hold it. And I have lined it with cheesecloth. Now, if you can't find something like this and again I got this from an Asian market uh, they have wonderful little gadgets like this if you can't find this and you don't have someone uh, to help you hold things then try this just use two dowels to hold your colander and it'll work okay okay um, I have my pot label with tartaric acid because you'll notice that right next to it is a pot cochineal without tartaric acid. Just a minute, I'll show you what the color looks like here when you don't add the acid to kind of orange up the natural purple of cochineal bug. All right, so let's go ahead and decant, or not decant, but strain this into the dye bath. I'm using my handy dandy, very fine mesh, whatever this is, sieve for lack of a better, lack of a better word, and I can't stop now, okay? I'm kind of committed, so if I make a mistake, oh well. I don't know if you can see the beautiful red. I want to stop for just a minute. Take a look at that red in there. I mean, that is just gorgeous, okay? You can see that the color it is dyeing, the cheesecloth. Pretty orangey looking, huh? So, let's continue to filter through. I will wait just a minute and let the last of it kind of push through. Whoops, 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 whoops. I did what I was not supposed to do. That's why the cheesecloth, because I have the sediment now caught by the cheesecloth and it didn't go into the dye bath. And by the way, nothing terrible will happen if you get sediment in your dye pot. It's just that that very, very fine bug will appear in your fiber. Uh, once the fiber dries out, you can kind of flick it out. It's not the end of the world. All right, so here we go. And let's take this out. And look what we have here. And I'm going to add a little bit more water. And to show you the difference between a pot with the tartaric acid, and remember, I use tartaric, but cream of tartar is more available. And so just realize that they are synonymous in my mind. Okay, so here is this, and it looks like I've added a fair bit of the tartaric acid because that actually has a little orange cast to it. We will see. But let me show you what it looks like without the tartaric acid. Isn't that something? Now I've already put, obviously, all my fibers that I'm going to dye in here, but I have not turned on the temperature. So these will both uh, be heated at the same time. But look at the difference already. That'll give you more of a purple. This will give you, obviously, a red. All right, so let's see what I'm dying. Well, here's where my second mistake came in, and I'll come back to that in just a minute. But I'm going to be dying a blended top for spinning of Blue Face Lester and Black Blue Face Lester. This has, they say black, but uh, I believe it's because it's the black skin uh, under the, under the uh, wool. But it's really a beautiful brown. 
fiber. Okay, so I will put it in the dye pot. Notice my bag. My bag has obviously been used for dyeing beforehand. I took the bag I had mordant of this fiber and replaced it with this bag because I really like to keep my bags white for mordant tape. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, so here's one. This goes in. Here's a second of the same fiber. I kind of shake it out a little bit. Here's a third. If I remember correctly, this is Targi, um, also used uh, for spinning. It's top. Let's see what this looks like. Yes, I think that is Targi, a very nice, spongy uh, breed of sheep. Okay. And then I have the Clicketet yarn forever and forever. So I'm going to just kind of shake it out a little bit in here. Open it up so it gets full exposure. And then I'm going to show you my mistake. When I use, when I transfer from a white bag to a previously dyed bag, uh, when I transfer mordanted fiber from one to the other bag, I have to be careful because I really need to put it then immediately into the dye pot. Because if I let it sit around like I did for hours before I made this video, look what I got. That pinkish purple from the mesh bag transferred over to this beautiful um, uh, wool flannel. And I am so hoping that this does not um, ruin it. This, this does not spot it. We will see, won't we, though? And then I have a couple of these little guys, little silk samples. I forgot to put in a silk scarf blank. And I'm going to push it gently down after I wipe off. This, okay, I'm gonna push it down. Now this is very orange. Remember I have not used um, this particular bug where I only use 10% weight of goods, I have actually not seen it so orange. I am amazed. And if this doesn't turn out to be a bright red, I'm going to be very embarrassed. Uh, it will be a beautiful color, but it will be new to me. Okay? So, <laughs> look at this. They look like Kool-Aid colors. They look positively artificial, don't they? Um, but here you have it. The two bots. One that's oranger, orangier than I thought it was going to be. And one that is kind of the fuchsia that I was expecting. So I will put the pots on, or lids on, I'll put, turn the heat on. I will uh, let it uh, heat up for at least an hour, and then I will keep it at temperature, and that of course is 180 to 200, closer to 200 with uh, the cochineal, because this little girl, these insects are females, this little girl likes her temperature pretty warm, and she waits to strike and by that I mean that you may look at it and you say oh my god that isn't giving me any color at all we'll give her time it can take the full hour before she really really gives up her color and then I will let it sit overnight now the next time you see me will not be tomorrow it will be the day after tomorrow when I do this video because I will take the first bath out tomorrow I will put in a new round of fibers for the second bath I'll do those tomorrow, wait until the following day, okay, to have it soak overnight. And then on that third day, I will show you um, the colors that I got from both first bath with tartaric acid and second bath. And similarly, first bath without tartaric acid and uh, this, uh, first and second bath both. So that'll be kind of cool. That'll be fun. Okay. All right. I'll see you soon.